usually direction is diagonal. It's not straight backwards. So here, and straight in. I like to hop over that leg again so I can go straight into the cross side position. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show a couple of variations on this. Like, how do you set this move up? It's one thing, this is the problem with a lot of the tapes, is they show you the takedown, and they, there's no indication of how you set it up. And if you think about this in terms of jiu-jitsu moves, you know, how many, it's, it's easy, the mechanics of the arm bar are easy. It's actually pulling it off on somebody that, that's where you get the sticking point. So, what you have to do is to maneuver yourself and your opponent into a position where you can do the move. So we're going to work on a couple of setups, ways to get him to move so that I can, I can attack. And some of these, they're all the same mechanics, but they're going to look a little bit different. Okay, the first one is a circular step motion. Okay, so I'm going to get him to take a step forward by pulling on his sleeve and by stepping back myself. And that's going to put him into this forward step position. Okay, and as he steps forward or directly after he puts his weight down, I'm going to clip this foot and drive him towards the corner. Okay, so I'm just going to move, uh, move him around a few times so that you can see the motion. I'm pulling here, okay, and I'm stepping back with this foot. Because now you see how that puts me in the position that I want. Circle step, okay, circle step, circle step. My foot's really close to his foot, okay, and I can catch his foot and drive him off into the corner. Okay, so let's do this. And I, again, I'm going to either catch him on the step or right after. Okay, so I'm going to step here. Okay, step. And take him down. Again. Step. Step. If you catch him before he puts his foot down, it's a lot easier than if you have to hack it out from under it. So the timing is really important. Ideally, you want to attack with your foot as you step back, as soon as you plant your weight on your foot, and as soon as you see him start his step, you want to start your sweep. If you wait till you see him stepping and try to catch it when you land, he'll always be too late. So I step, immediately go into the sweep. Okay, so step, and go into the sweep. So you want to attack when he starts his step, rather than when he finishes it, because it takes your leg a little while to get there. Now, the next setup for Coach Igari is I'm going to pull him in to get his weight moving forward, and then when he balks and prevents me from pulling him uh, forward anymore, then I'm going to attack backwards. Okay, this is, this is a setup. Basically, you know, in any of these throws, you can do three things. You can wait for your opponent to move, okay, which is, takes impeccable timing, because you don't know when he's going to move. So sometimes that'll happen. He'll step right into your throw as you're attempting it, but it's not a good rely on it. You can also, if you're a little stronger, pull him into the throw. Okay, he can be driving in. If I'm strong enough, I can just go ahead and throw him that way, even though he's not already moving in that direction. Again, that's really hard to do. Ideally, what you want to do is to make a motion that causes him to move in a way that you can predict. Okay? Most people, if you grab them and start just dragging them across the mat, even if they don't know what they're doing, they're not going to suddenly start resisting. Okay? Because he's assuming I'm going to do something forward, some sort of a forward motion. Okay? So if I'm here and I just start pulling him, you know, I just start pulling him, he's going to get scared. He doesn't know what's coming. And at the very least, um, he's going to try to pull back. Okay? And that's what I want. And that's what I'm anticipating. Okay, because the throw is actually going this way, back into the into a diagonal, not this way. So when he pulls away, then he's playing right into my, my hands on this. Okay, so what you want to do is to set it up, because I know he's going to pull back. So I'm going to drag him for this drill. I'm going to drag him a couple of times, and then he's going to pull against me. As soon as I feel that pull against me, I'm going to switch direction and just dash into him to do the throw. Okay, so I'm going to go through it slow without throwing first. So I'm here, I pull really hard, okay? I pull really hard and now he drops his weight and he prevents me from pulling. At this point, I'm going to bring this foot up and take him off in that corner, okay? So it, it's, it has to come right off. I can't 
pull, pull, let him start to defend, and then wait three seconds and do it because then he'll shift his weight back. So it has to be immediate. Here we go. Okay, so. Pull, I pull, I pull, and he starts to fight against me really hard. Now come in. That's better. One more time. So pull it. Pull it. And then I come in. Okay, the next setup for Koshigari is from an over the back grip. Okay, and I like this grip a lot because people in jiu-jitsu tend to bend over. And um, what you can use is, um, you can use this grip because it's easy to get. A lot of times in judo, you really have to work to get over the guy's shoulder. Jiu-jitsu, it's not so hard because everybody seems to fight from here. Okay, so I'm just going to go through getting this grip. Okay, we come in. Um, if he's not completely bent over, a lot of times he'll be like this. All I have to do is reach over and I'll grab his belt. Okay, that's pretty easy to do. But if he's not bent over, I just take the lapel, tug down really quick, and then reach over. Now, I'm, I'm sort of perpendicular to him at this point. Okay, he feels like he's got a takedown attempt right away. There's a couple of different counter moves we're going to do from this position because as long as you have a hold of the sleeve, you're, you're pretty safe. So, from here, a lot of guys are going to try to lift you up, okay, and either take you back, take you over the, over the top, or however. But you can prevent this if, okay, he, he, there's some distance right between us now. And when he comes in, he's going to come in and start to bump me up, okay? And that's the point when I want to throw. I can't wait too long on this. My foot is really close to his foot. So when he comes in to try to lift, I go straight for the takedown and flip the foot. Okay, this is right when he's making his foot light by coming up on his toe to try to lift me up. And then again, I just kind of hop over the leg and I end up in a scarf hold position. Let's do it one more time from here and then I'll show another angle. So I get in this position, okay, he comes in to lift and I take down. Okay, let's try it once from this way. So here he comes in to lift. Okay, the next throw is called a Kosoto Gari, which is a minor outer reap. It's pretty similar to this throw. It goes in the same direction. Again, it's just your bodies are different, uh, positioned differently relative to each other, so you have to use a different leg to clip the foot. <coughs> so I'm going to go with one of the grip breaks that we did before because I like this one off of a sleeve grip and the back grip. So if I can get, if he grabs me here, okay, and I pop the grip loose using this grip, now, what I like to do is go behind and grab the belt. Okay, so from the back, the position is here. I have my shoulder in the back of his shoulder so I can use it to pressure him forward. Okay, so this isn't a standard version of the, the takedown. This isn't like the, the textbook version of Kosoto Gari. Um, but I think this one works a lot better uh, as far as the jiu-jitsu tournaments go. So again, get the grip, go to the back. Now what I want to do is to clip this foot forward, but I'm taking him backwards. Okay, and the way I'm going to accomplish this, again, is I'm going to move him and make him resist me. So I'm going to push forward with my shoulder to try to work him forward. Most of the time he's not going to want this to happen. 
Okay, so as I feel his pressure moving backwards, I'm going to switch my grip and kind of push down on the belt and then rotate my body into him, clip this leg. So I push forward, okay, and then I go backwards. So here I get the grip, pop it loose, move in, drive him forward until I feel him resist, then I clip and turn. Cover. Okay, I want to take my hand out of the belt before he lands on it so that I don't get it pinned under me. Okay, one more time for a different angle. Side. I pop the grip loose. I turn. Okay, I drive him in. Flip and turn into him. Again, I'm pulling from the hip. Okay, this kind of emotion as opposed to a bent knee motion. You don't have a lot of um, power that way. And you either want to hit the foot here, this is the contact surface, or you want to rotate it up and catch with the bottom of your foot. Either one will work. Um, the bottom of the foot hurts you less. Because sometimes you can drive your ankle into his ankle and it's a little painful. Okay, this next one is called an Osotogari. It's a major outer reap. It's a really common throw, and most people will probably have seen some sort of demonstration form of it. Um, we're going to work on, I'll show you the mechanics, and then we'll work on two ways to set it up. Because setting this, again, this is one of those things where the setup is the key. Most people can do the throw against a non-resisting opponent. But getting somebody on the mat who's trying to defend is a different story. Okay, with Osotogari, again, it's going to the rear. Okay, so off at a 45 degree angle to the rear. From this grip, Okay, I'm going to use the same off balancing technique of driving his sleeve down and his head this way, kind of a steering wheel motion. His shoulder drops, it loads this foot. Okay, after I do this, I'm going to drop my level and step with his back foot towards that foot. Okay, and I'm going to bring this leg through like so. Okay. And what's going to happen is this, this foot is going to be completely loaded with weight and then my right leg is going to take it out from under it. Okay. This throw, it hurts really bad for the person taking the fall. Okay. That, that's good in determinant, bad in training. So what you want to do is work on not crushing your opponent. Okay. In judo, typically the demonstration forms of the throw, you remain standing and you can give an upward tug on the sleeve uh, arm to, to the cushion the fall, okay? And in a tournament situation, you just drop your shoulder, you know, and try to stun your opponent so you get some extra, extra free time on the ground and get whatever position that you want. So here, in, okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the throw, and I'm gonna do the, the way that you should practice initially until you get used to this. Okay, here. Okay, notice I'm pulling up on the sleeve. Give it a little tug right before he hits, and then he takes the fall. Okay, one more time here. Drive in, step. Like so. Okay, and once from this angle. Okay, I'm attacking this leg. Here, step through. Okay, now we're going to do a soda guard from the circle step setup. This is the same setup that we used last time on uh, Koichi Gari when I get them to step in a circle. So I'm pulling, remember, here I've got this grip, okay, but I can use this grip too. You know, anything I can do to make him step forward with that foot. So I'm pulling the sleeve right here, okay, and step and pull. And 99% of the time he's going to step forward. Occasionally, you're going to get somebody who doesn't, but, you know, that's always going to happen. So, you step forward with this foot, and this sets you up at, a, at an angle now. So, as he comes forward, I twist the body this way and step through to reap the leg. Okay, so let's do this. Pull in and come all the way through. In, step, and come in. 
Okay, this next setup is similar to the one we did. We're pulling them in to get a backward uh, energy, and then once he gives us that, then we're going to come in and attack. Um, what I like to do, a lot of times people are going to take this really defensive posture. So he's going to grab me and bend over, kind of a horse stance position. And it's really hard. I mean, he's got a stiff arm going here. Um, you know, I, he's going to block me off if I try to come in. Okay, there's a couple of principles here. I can't go straight into it, right? But I can go at an angle, at a 45 degree angle, and come in, okay? Again, I can't go straight in, but I can open him up and go at a 45 degree angle by pulling the sleeve out just a little bit and twisting my body. Okay, so what we're going to do is kind of use that. We're going to combine it with pulling in and something that's kind of like shaking a rug out. Okay, I'm going to use my whole body to pull. I'm not just pulling with my arms. Okay, as I pull in, I'm going to be driving off. Okay, driving, lifting, pulling like this. If you've done anything like a power clean or whatever, your legs drive and at the top your arms pull. Okay, so this kind of thing. I'm going to hit him with a couple of those because he's going to be off balance at that point. And when I feel a, any kind of a backward pressure, I'm going to go straight in. This also has the effect of breaking down the stiff arms a little bit. Okay, so from here, he's kind of stiff arm. He's sitting in sort of a horse stance. Okay, what I'm going to do is pull him in. So I get him coming forward, get him off balance, get him moving, and then I come in and attack with the throw. Here, okay, stiff arm me, right? I'm going to lift, pull, and then come all the way in. With those sotagari, it's really important to get this twist. Now, I didn't mention this before, but I think this is a good point. If he just hit the stiff arm. Okay, what I want to do is kind of akin to throwing a cross. I'm twisting my body. And you can actually practice this as a drill. I come in and I just punch him with my shoulder. Okay, that, 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 that does two things. That gets the hip rotation element, which gets him off balance, but it also gets me used to making chest to chest contact, which is important for this throw. Okay, I don't want to try to throw him from my arm's length away. What I want to do is slide in so that I'm here and I get my chest all the way in, but it's a really sharp pop and that will load him up onto that foot. Now we're going to work on a takedown. Um, it's an ankle pick takedown.